In Jujutsu Kaisen, many characters show off the potential to become high-level sorcerers with unique abilities and approaches to fighting, but very often, that future is cut short. Kokichi Muta, also known as Mechamaru, was one of the young sorcerers with the ability to become something rather special if given the time to develop, but in episode 7 of Jujutsu Kaisen season 2, Kokichi's time in the light was cut short at the hands of Mahito, meaning that we will never get to see what he could have become with his new sense of resolve and his ability to exist in the world freely after being granted his new body. Today, I want to change that by discussing Kokichi, the abilities he had at his disposal, and even the powers system at large, all in order to determine what would happen if Mecha Maru reached his full potential. The idea of a particular Jujutsu Kaisen character reaching their full potential typically requires three things to be checked off the itinerary. In Mechamaru's case, the first thing that he has to do is not die at the hands of Mahito or Geto while retaining his human body and all of the benefits that it brings him in combat. In my video explaining what Geto's potential could have looked like if everything went in his favor, I somewhat approached the discussion with a focus on how this could all happen within the confines of the narrative. In Kokichi's case, Failure was almost guaranteed from the moment he stepped onto the battlefield with a special grade sorcerer and curse spirit with no backup. Not many characters could survive a conflict of this magnitude, and it's clear that this version of Mechamaru couldn't either. But what if he was able to? Rather than somehow defeating both of these characters in this hypothetical scenario, Kokichi would simply have to book it, trying to escape from Ghetto and Maito's grasp and alert Gojo of what exactly was going down on October 31st. It's unlikely that Ghetto in particular would allow this to happen, but in the event that he somehow does get away or survive, and Shibuya is postponed or even completely taken off the board as an option, Kokichi will have cleared the first and arguably most difficult stage of his journey to self-actualization. Like many characters in the story, the main reason he doesn't obtain abilities closer to what his peak should look like is because he dies before he can actually bring them into reality. And with this hurdle being cleared, we'd now actually be able to talk about what exactly he could do or how he could go about doing it if his circumstances were permitted. This is where the second stage or hurdle comes in. Aside from simply dying before you have the opportunity to evolve, a sorcerer not having the right mentality when it comes to the marathon of sorcery as Ghetto calls it, is one of the primary reasons that they never reach the heights of their ability. Megami early on in the story is an amazing example of this, and both Gojo and Sukuna chastise him for his mentality when going into battle. While Mechamaru doesn't have anything in the story that implies an explicitly incorrect or close-minded view of sorcery. In this scenario, just to be safe, we're going to dial that ambition meter up to 11, having him desire fighting strength over almost anything in the pursuit of remaining with Miwa in the world of sorcery and protecting her. With this, he now has a motivation to keep improving and growing stronger, which only leaves the third and final step applying your abilities freely and creatively, what I would argue to be the most interesting part of this discussion, because it is here where we get to talk about what Mechamaru could actually add to his bag if given the opportunity. Now, one thing that obtaining a functioning body could have limited is the range and max cursed energy output that Kokichi would actually have in battle. Due to his heavenly restriction, Kokichi was able to control puppets with his technique on a countrywide scale, and in his own words, surpass the limits of his cursed energy output. Now, we don't know whether or not Maito's soul manipulation left only the upside of the vow intact, or if the moment that his body was healed, he lost all of the benefits of the restrictions. In the worst case scenario, Kokichi can no longer have bots of all shapes and sizes surveying all of Japan, ready to be used at a moment's notice, nor would he have the crazy level of cursed energy output that we've seen him display before. It's hard to pinpoint exactly what his range would be or how hard of a nerf his cursed energy output would take in the event that having a real body voids the contract. However, Due to the unorthodox nature of the heavenly restriction being broken, I would wager that Mechamaru actually retained the range and energy boost even with his body being healed. Not only did Maito simply reshape his soul, which is an ability that seems to exceed or even sidestep most of the verse's basic understanding of what's possible, but Kokichi also seems pretty confident that he can use his bot station back in Kyoto to alert Miwa and have her alert Gojo, so it's likely that his range hasn't been lowered by any significant margin. In the best case scenario, Kokichi's cursed energy output and range haven't wavered in the slightest, and in that world, 
I'm making him Jujutsu Kaisen's Iron Man. With the real body, he can actually pilot his own bots, as we see very clearly in his fight with Maito. So doing this more regularly, albeit on a smaller scale, is something I could definitely see a mecha nerd like Kokichi doing. There are several limitations or hoops that he would have to jump through in order to fully utilize his mechs properly, but in a general sense, I think Kokichi would approach fighting very similarly to a Shikigami user or Curse Spirit manipulator. Rather than being a simple observer, as he once was, Kokichi would now have the ability to exist on the battlefield as a floor general, directing and manipulating his forces, along with being able to throw down himself when necessary. I'll discuss some of the previously mentioned limitations, restrictions, or rules that would be put in place for this version of Kokichi as we go, but for now, I imagine that he would be able to create bots for designated purposes, and I personally would split them up into four different levels, each having their own variation of power, technique, and function. Level 1 Mecha Marus would essentially have the function that they did in his brief scuffle with Mahito. They would exist in mass with the sole purpose of distracting stronger opponents or being able to overwhelm weaker ones through a sheer numerical advantage. These bots wouldn't be equipped with any high level abilities like Ultra or Ultimate Cannon and their sole purpose would be to sniff out the techniques of stronger opponents or swarm weaker ones in order to overwhelm them. Kokichi could and most likely would take a lot of inspiration from Suguru Gedo style of fighting with these mechs, as the level 1 bots are the equivalent of Ghetto's low-level swarm of cursed spirits. Their power and utility comes from their quantity, not their quality. Because of their low level of power and general lack of diversity when it comes to hacks, Kokichi would be able to control them from just about anywhere in Japan, creating scenarios where he can add minor assistance to allies whenever it is needed, making him a pretty powerful supporting type character as well. A step above the most basic version of the bots would garner you level 2 Mecha Marus, and these would essentially be equipped with the standard abilities that we see Ultimate Mecha Maru demonstrate against Panda. The number of these that Kokichi has and can deploy at any time would be significantly lower than the first level of bots, but in exchange, the individual bodies would have significantly more power. With one level 2 Mecha Maru possessing semi-grade 1 level power, getting attacked by 4 to 5 of these guys at once would probably prove to be trouble for your average grade 1 sorcerer, and would definitely be able to defeat most cursed spirits that exist in the verse. These would be deployed, in most cases, once the first wave of Mecha Marus has done their job in scouting an opponent's technique or wearing them down through a war of attrition. While these bots would be significantly stronger and much more useful in an individual context, this second level of Mecha Marus would cost significantly more cursed energy, and the range at which he can use them would have to decrease somewhat. He wouldn't necessarily have to be right on the battlefield with them in order to utilize them fully, but because of their higher cursed energy consumption, if Kokichi Kichi wanted to really maximize their abilities and utility on the battlefield, being close while directing them is his best bet. Panda actually observes something pretty similar to what I'm currently describing, saying that Kokichi's efficiency with puppeting Ultimate Mecha Maru probably requires a close range connection. And while that wasn't true in that specific context, controlling multiple semi-grade 1 puppets would still have some relatively stiff requirements. Now this is all well and good in its own right, but it's at levels 3 and 4 where things start to get really fun and really impressive. Now if you've ever seen the MCU or even remotely familiar with Iron Man and his old shtick, I'm sure you know that he has his own personal suit of armor that he uses and pilots. Kokichi's willingness to fight against Maito and his giant mech implies to me that when push comes to shove, he is willing to get his hands dirty and get up close and personal, so taking a lot of inspiration from Iron Man and his way of fighting is something that I think would be pretty cool for the character. Character. It would also greatly benefit him to be ready at a moment's notice to join the battlefield because just about every character in the series uses Shikigami, Controlled Curse Spirits, or some other form of long range attacking ability, acknowledges the fact that having the diversity of tactics to fight both up close and from a distance is imperative to being an elite level sorcerer. Ghetto fights like that, Megami fights like that, Gojo says that close quarters fighters are the hardest to deal with, and Sukuna even commends Megami for using Shikigami and combining them with his own physical ability. Abilities. Needless to say, fighting at range is all well and good, but if you aren't willing or able to get your own hands dirty, your potential is severely limited, meaning a personal suit for Kokichi to use on a regular basis is absolutely essential to him becoming a fully realized combatant. Now this level 3 Mecha Maru wouldn't be massive like the one we actually see him use against Mahito, nor would it be quite as powerful. Ghetto actually mentions Kokichi's temporary special grade level output in his fight with Mahito, but that's only because he could use years worth of cursed energy in one big burst, synthetically boosting his ability
abilities far beyond what they'd normally be. The same sort of logic would be applied here, but on a much smaller scale. So rather than having 17 years worth of cursed energy at his disposal to shoot at any moment, Kokichi would likely measure his stored cursed energy for his personal suit in weeks, or in the best case scenario, months. This is still an absolutely absurd amount of cursed energy to have in a vessel at any given time, and would likely make him one of the hardest hitting grade one level characters in the entire story. If he already has enough power with just his normal output to be a semi grade one at range, several days worth of his cursed energy being concentrated and used in one single blast would definitely be enough to push him over the edge in terms of attacking ability. Weeks would probably be enough for him to incinerate low level special grades in one hit, and in the event he decides to go all out for a several month cursed energy blast, I can't see most sorcerers that hold that grade one title just eating it without extreme damage to their bodies. Level 3 Mechamaru would be an absolute beast on its own, but when combined with the level 1s and 2s, I honestly think Kokichi would be an extremely tactical fighter with a monstrous level of power. Just like everything else in JJK though, with great power comes great restrictions. In this case, the restriction really is that this personal suit of armor can't be fueled on just Kokichi's daily output of cursed energy. It only has the power that it does because of it constantly being supercharged in the background of Kokichi's day-to-day -day life. This also means that whenever it is being used, his physical body is being put on the line, so an added sense of danger is present that doesn't exist with the level 1 and level 2 Mechamarus. However, because of this, Kokichi would have his own personal suit kitted out, as well as many, many, many contingency plans depending on the scenario. The simple domain tubes, tracking system, pigeon viola, and hell, I could even see him going full Iron Man and giving himself a whole propulsion system if he wanted to. This suit is really the only thing that can protect him considering he has no experience in physical combat, so it's completely within reason for Kokichi to spare no expense to ensure that he is safe. I could even see him taking all of the data from Yuji and Maki's fight and pre-programming certain functions and reactions into the suit so that his close quarters combat ability is significantly increased, albeit artificially. On top of this, because we know that Kokichi can pre-program certain functions into his robots, it'd be really cool and useful if he always had one or two level one mechs lying in wait in case of a domain expansion. In the event that one is opened, they would be immediately directed to destroy the barrier, dispelling the opponent's trump card and ability. This would mean that even inside of a domain, Kokichi has contingency after contingency after contingency to make sure that the body he works so hard to obtain would not be destroyed so easily. You could also program something where he's even able to draw on the ambient curse energy contained within level 1 and 2 Mechamars in the event that he needs a supercharged blast or even just to refill his battery altogether. With level 3 Mechamaru on the battlefield, Kokichi is easily performing at the level of a grade 1. And honestly, while he might not be the strongest character to hold this rank depending on how you scale certain characters, with just these three levels of robots, he is a guy that I definitely want on my team. This just leaves us with level 4 the ultimate trump card that I'm sure we're all familiar with. Ultimate Mechamaru Mode Absolute. The giant mech said to temporarily have special grade level power would be Kokichi's ace in the hole, and something that is very, very sparse in terms of usage because of that. In the event that levels 1 through 3 can't get the job done though, Kokichi would use his long range control to summon parts of the giant mech and combine them with him at the center, just like the megazords you see in Power Rangers. Once again, not only does this allow Kokichi to use a giant mech nearly anywhere in Japan, but it also heavily plays into his fascination with robot related series, and I think taking inspiration from some of the most iconic mech or technology based characters in fiction is very fitting for him here. Ultimate Mechamaru Mode Absolute would by far be the most powerful thing in Kokichi's arsenal, while also being the one he is most reserved to use. Just like in the actual canon, this mech is powered by stored up cursed energy, and as a result, it can't truly be used up completely multiple times within quick succession. Its speed, power, and cursed energy output would all be on par with that of a special grade per Gato's own admission, and when paired with the other abilities that we've talked about him having, Kokichi would really become one of the most powerful and competent sorcerers in the verse when not looking into likes of special cases like Gojo and Tsukuna. Rather than being relative to the likes of Kamo as he was once before, Mechamaru with his full potential unleashed the way described might just be stronger than Nanami, Meimei, Kusakabe, and even Toe under the right circumstances. On top of all of the straight-up combative options that Kokichi would have, his ability to survey all of Japan with 
ease should not be understated, and this would make him an absolute unit with recon missions or providing assistance for his fellow sorcerers. The only major drawback to Kokichi's abilities is that they all require a lot of preparation to be put into place. Making a personal suit of armor and charging it sufficiently, creating dozens of fodder bots, several baseline ultimate mecha marus, and a giant robot that can output special grade levels of power isn't easy and it would likely take Kokichi several months to a year before he's even able to put his entire system into place effectively. Much like Gojo following his awakening, time would be necessary for Kokichi to get a full handle on his powers and refine what can actually be done with them. But if he reached his full potential, if given the time to actually flesh out the full limits of puppet manipulation, he'd be an absolute beast in the world of sorcerers and curses. If you enjoyed this style of content and want to see more, check out this video I made on Ghetto where I explored what his full potential could possibly look like. Subscribe for more videos like this, comment who exactly you'd like to see me discuss the full potential of next, and I'll see you in the next one.